When you get the emergency alert on your phone, are you ready to evacuate? It's pretty scary stuff, you guys. Let's talk about emergency preparedness today. So what happened to us last week, Lisa? Oh my goodness, you guys, it was crazy. So as you know, Southern BC has been flooded. Yeah. We have had this atmospheric river come through and it, it's been really scary. I'm sure you've seen it on the news. Yeah, it's a lot of water all yeah. of a sudden. Yeah, we just wanted to touch base with you guys, let you know that we're safe, we're okay. But at, at one point we did get an evacuation order on our phone yep. that was super like rah, 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 and it, it scared me. because And the reason it scared me is because we're not prepared to leave our motor home behind. Yeah, we thought about it, yeah. uh, about having that uh, bug out bag and such, but when it comes down to the moment, uh, you don't feel prepared. Kent and I just got back from town and the one road that goes from the campsite into town is washed out. There is an alternate route, but it is worse than the Dempster Highway. So we can't take Bessie on that route. And the creek at the campground that we're staying at is about to flood. Um, we just went down there and it looks absolutely terrifying. I can show you some of the footage here. And so we're not totally sure what to do, but we just wanted to touch, I just wanted to touch base, touch base with you guys because I don't know where this is gonna go. Right now, Kent is like, let's just batten down the hatches and be ready to drive if we need to drive. The rain is still falling. It doesn't look like it's gonna end anytime soon. So we're probably gonna have to find a different place to stay. Um, it's kind of scary. Yeah, because if you haven't done it, you haven't done it. Like we talked about it, but yeah. we didn't actually get her done. So yeah, and we always have felt that our motorhome itself is a bug out vehicle, yeah. right? But when there's no road. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the road doesn't exist now. Yeah. Uh, evacuation doesn't look like driving your motorhome. Yeah, even your car. So there were some people that were stuck between landslides. Yes. They had to abandon their vehicles and get on helicopters to get out of that area last week. So. So we just wanted to chat with you guys today a little bit about emergency preparedness and what that looks like for a full-time RVer because I think it's different yeah. than emergency preparedness for people who are living in their house. And and people will say, well, wh why would any you know buddy leave a campground where you have all your services and yeah. and leave? Well, the reason is is because overland water brings with it debris, mud, uh, Shut all down. kinds of uh, of de of wood debris. Uh, it can wipe out and go across uh, the fields and just take out all things mm -hmm. in its way. Well, and also when you're in that situation, I know for the city of Merritt, their entire water treatment plant crashed. Yeah. So those people had to evacuate because they had no clean water. So it it's went not underwater. Safe. Yeah. Anyway, so let's talk today about two different types of preparedness. One of them is what we would call a bug out bag. And the other with things that you can't really put in a kit, but that you need to grab on your way out the door. Yeah. So let's talk about the kit first. So the kit is going to be some food, some water, um, the things that you can put a, a, aside ahead of time, like medication. Yes. Um, yeah. Those kinds of things so that when you grab that bag, you know, you're mm -hmm. saying, okay, for the next few days, we're going to have more than just the clothes we're wearing. Yeah, exactly. So you want to put, like Kent said, those things, you want to put some cash in there. Um, make sure you have one for your pets. Yep. So we actually, what we did is we actually built three bug out bags. So we have one for our dog and we have one for the car and we have one for the motorhome. So, yep. you know, in those kits, we have just a change of clothes, a phone charger or cord. I mean, those things are cheap. You can just grab a couple of those, throw those in there. Yeah. So you can have a way to charge your stuff. Definitely have food and snacks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have water. Yeah. Um, dog food, you know, treats, you know, the things that the dog is going to be panicked, but you hand her one of her own toys and yeah. she'll become less panicked. Totally. Now, uh, yeah, an extra leash and collar, that kind of stuff. Yeah. When it comes to water, it's really heavy. Yeah. So I actually just put a couple of water bottles, like the big water bottles in the car. Yeah. And I also put in a life straw because I figured that way we can actually just drink whatever water we can find, whether it's in a lake or whether it's, yeah. you know, at a, at a, uh, what do they call them? Like a, um, emergency 
uh, shelter, that's the word, yeah. <laughs> shelter, location, you know, then you've got your straw, you know that whatever water you're drinking is going to be safe for you. Like there's water coming in off the mountain, but you want to, you want to make sure that it's clear. Yeah, you want to filter yeah. that before you drink it. So yeah, so that's what I did instead of just packing a whole bunch of water bottles in the backpack, just grab the life straw. Prescription eyewear? Yeah, I, would, I did throw a couple pairs of contacts in there because yeah. I just thought you never know if something happens that you lose your glasses or whatever. At least I've got I've got my eyes with yeah. me. Also a first aid kit. Yeah, definitely first aid kit, yeah. emergency blanket so you can wrap up and be Stay warm. Stay warm, yeah. Um, what else is in there? I think that's about it. Yeah. Definitely. Just basically some stuff so that you can survive for those 72 hours well. And chances are you will be in a shelter situation, but it's possible that you have to be outside. And if you're in Canada and it's winter and you have to be outside, you better have a toque or something warm to put on your feet. Ooh, so, what if you are you have um, dietary restrictions? Yeah, that's why we packed a lot of food because I'm I'm celiac. I can't just eat what like the muffins or whatever might be served at an emergency shelter. Yeah. I can only eat what I can eat. So I have to make sure that I have all the stuff I need for that. And also rotate your stuff in your go bag. Don't just leave it in there forever. All right, so that's the go bag. So like I said, we've got one in the car, one in the motorhome, and one for the dog. But at the last second, there's gonna be- Yeah. S Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just saying at the last second, it's, it's, it's that panic mode of what else do we need? Well, there's a few things. Yeah. Number one, your documentation. Your, mm. You want your passports. Uh, things like that you cannot replace that you actually will require. Yeah, exactly. Another one might be those medications. You might not yeah. be able to stockpile those in your go bag. You might just have to grab them on your way out the door. There could be memorabilia, small, that you need to grab. Yeah, as full-time RVers, we actually, we have a, quite a small motorhome. Most of our nostalgic photo albums, baby clothes from the kids, that kind yeah. of stuff, we don't carry that around with us. That's at our daughter's house. So, but you might have those things. So you want to grab those before you leave. Cause I, I don't know if we said this already or not, but you may not be able to get back to your home. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the thing that makes it panicky or scary yeah. is that you may have to just say goodbye to your house. So yeah, that's not something you've <clears throat> ever planned, but it's something that uh, is important to um, accept yeah. in that moment. Yeah, so make sure that what you're taking, you know, is the stuff that you need. Um, another thing would be, again, your cell phone and or your laptop or whatever it is that you yeah. feel that you need to take with you. Uh, so so those things, those last minute, like the heirlooms or the, the, <clears throat> the valuables, those things, you aren't going to put in your go bag ahead of time. So no. I recommend just having a list so and know where the list is, you know, tape it to the inside of a cabinet door or something like that so that you can quickly grab those things. That's right. Your top five, your top 10 yeah. items that you just, might literally have like those with us. five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're sound asleep, five minutes goes real quick. <laughs> and so it might not be in a suitcase. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, I think that's about it. It's almost about it. What do you do uh, with your actual rig? when you close and lock that door and leave. I would suggest you uh, dismantle your sewer system so you're not connected to a sewer line, uh, which will have pressure on it in case of overland water. Uh, take away the, the fresh water line so that that's separated. Um, I, would, I don't know about disconnecting the power. Maybe I would, probably I would, yeah. uh, just so that that's not a concern. I would leave the fridge on and I would leave one light on maybe um and that's about it mm -hmm. okay and lock the door and lock the door and say goodbye and now, hope that you can come back if it's cold i might leave the electrical on and one heater on yeah okay yeah i guess it would depend on the situation as to why you have to evacuate yeah but actually that's the another point actually is that no matter where you are it's a, not a bad idea to just quickly check with your local you know, municipality or whatever and find out if they have specific requests or requirements for evacuation situation. Now, if you can move your motor home and uh, you can move it to a, pl a little safer area, we did. Yeah, we did one we night. Were, we were really close to the creek and we're saying, you know what, we're at the very front of any problem that would happen. Yeah. We moved to the other side of the campground into a parking lot yeah. and we stayed overnight there. Why? It just gave us that much space away yeah. from where there could be a breach. And there was a, so much debris coming down that creek that night that we just it was just pounding and rolling and churning and, and knocking. Yeah. And it was loud. And so, we just thought we needed space. 
Well, and the thing is this, like you have to trust your instinct. We talk about that all the time in the RV life, no matter if you're staying overnight in a Walmart parking lot and you just have a gut instinct that says, don't stay here. And that's what we had that night. Yeah. I did for sure. And I was like, I don't feel safe staying where we are. So yeah, we had to move. And, and why the parking lot? Because the roads were not uh, able to be used at that point. Yeah, we couldn't really go anywhere else. But um, yeah, so trust your gut. And if you feel unsafe, then you Move. know what? We were the only ones who moved. Everybody else stayed in, in place and that's fine. I had a better sleep knowing that we had been proactive. Yeah. Of course it was fine. We could have stayed where we were, but you don't know that in the moment. So yeah. I've seen what happens to areas like this when they get overrun with that debris and that water yeah. and that mud. Uh, and it's not something you can recover from by just saying, you know, pull out a shovel and, and let's fix it. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. So that's why we moved that night. Yeah, exactly. We're so, good. I think that's it, you guys. We are, like I said, we're doing well, we're yeah. safe. We were cut off from yeah. all groceries and gas and from our families. Um, For a significant amount of time. A couple of weeks, well, a couple of weeks from, you know, between Abbotsford and Chilliwack, but for a few days from any kind of groceries. So yeah, that's another kind of thing that we just had to deal with. So yeah. never a dull moment in the life of Kent and Lisa and season seven sort of begins with a bit of a bang, but yep. uh, you know what? We're, we're happy to share the things that we're learning in life with you in hopes that it will keep you guys safe and keep you have that peace of mind of, yep. you know, hey, doesn't matter what happens. We got little, this. A little bit of preparedness. Yeah. Never hurt anybody. Exactly. So that's it for today, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. My name is Lisa. My name is Kent. We're living light RV. We are out there. We're grabbing life by the tail and we're taking you guys along with us because there's just so much adventure out there. Let's go do it. And we'll see you next Friday. See you on Friday. Yes. New video release day, Friday for season seven. All right, you guys take care. Have a fabulous week. Like a huge beam. From like a bridge. Yeah. From like a bridge. Which is why the road is washed out. Yeah. Wow. Unreal. That's unreal. Okay, we need to go home. I need see, to feel see that safe. rolling? See that big piece rolling? Not really. That's what's making all the noise. As the logs are hitting the rocks underneath. I've seen this once before. It was a sudden valley before the entire valley got wiped out. Oh, okay. So devastating.